the sweet connections. We're calling to let you guys know that we was too busy eating and traveling around in this wet rain that we had down here uh, for Thanksgiving. So I didn't cook. So some of y'all had sent out a whole lot wanted me to do a big cooking thing. No. Unfortunately, I didn't do the cooking thing. I've been trying to get the life of Cousin Patches together. So, uh, but I will be doing something for Christmas. And uh, I wanted to uh, let you guys know what's been going on and bring y'all up to speed on um, being Big D. Now, previously, you know, uh, I had a couple shows about Big D. And I've been doing past relationship uh, stories. And some of y'all tend to think that I left Big D and went on these horrible dates. No, I have not left Big D at all. We still together. Still together. But through all the things that life goes through, we are still together. And we've gotten an understanding now. We do. Now that we shoot at each other. We only shoot to graze. We don't shoot to kill each other. <laughs> Lord knows we gotta have a stopping point. We both can't be right all the time. So, but them past stories are just that past stories. And since y'all love my past stories, I figured I'll let Big D tell you about his first week of dates with me. You know, from the male perspective, because, you know, I tend to think that I'm a hot catch, and uh, he's a very lucky man, but he probably obtained me up under some unusual circumstances. Did I say that? Unusual circumstances. Unusual is the fact that when we first got, we was getting to know each other. She was only in town for a day or two before she went to Atlanta to do like a different camp. So uh, we basically got to know each other over the phone. Yes, we did. Through the making of that whole turkey dinner, I was talking to him on the phone. And one of the things that kind of caught my attention was that y'all got y'all. Listen, y'all see the videos, y'all see who Patches is, y'all know that she's very honest. Sometimes she's so honest that I think she gives away a little bit too much information. But under the right circumstances, that honesty that she has in her is like a beautiful thing. And she, but one of the things she was, I was on the phone with her, and she's going over this big Thanksgiving meal that she's cooking. She's like, I'm cooking greens and chicken and I done fried hens and I'm doing peach cobblers and cakes and cookies and pies and I'm sitting there thinking, this girl ain't cooking all this. <laughs> she just look like I'm just saying that. You know what I'm saying? Just look like it look good. Yeah, just who, who does that? Who cooks like that? You know what I'm saying? For like three people. <laughs> so she's like, well, my niece got this internet show, and if you go on the internet, you can watch. And she done recorded me cooking this whole thing. So I'm like, uh, I'm gonna check it out. I've seen. You. If he didn't subscribe, uh, he wouldn't have been able to talk. At least you can do a subscribe to watch us uh, cook this meal. <laughs> so I goes on YouTube. I pulls up the video. And lo and behold, there she is standing in full mumu <laughs> in the kitchen with this spread all over the table. And everything that she said that she cooked is on tape. I'm sitting in amazement like, she's like, I cooked a turkey and I took Cornish hens and I fried them and I laid them around the turkey like the turkey had babies. I love for my turkeys to look like they gave birth. <laughs> so, I'm not a turkey. So they so, little fried little heads. Yes, so they are. I'm sitting and I'm watching this. Candy's husband was like, y'all took it too far. I'm not eating them little baby hens. You cooking the hens, the babies? 
I said yes. Yes, I am cooking the baby. He thought we had gone too far at that point. But yes, I, I was cooking, and the whole time I was cooking, I was talking to Mr. Thickness on the phone. Yes, she was cooking. I thought he was married first. You see, you know, when I first met him, I walked up to this uh, bus, and uh, he was on the phone. And he looked so thick and handsome, you could tell somebody was taking good care of him. But he was handsome, so I gave him the eye. <laughs> and she shot me. She shot. She took a look. She had a little sunglasses on, walking across with a little baby fat jacket and boots. And, and she I had a on a black fur coat. You know, I had my walking stick up my stick in the bag. She put, <laughs> she put her glasses down and shot me this way. <laughs> it was thick. So at that point, I'm no. I'm talking union business on the phone. So I'm like, hold on, let me. I said, just give me a minute. So I opens up the door. And he's dedicated to that union, so I'm so glad he got off the phone to talk to me. Well, it was only fit that I get with a community activist when I'm I full blooded union. <laughs> so we fight the good fight. That's what we do. Yeah, That's got a mama in our bitch. So, <laughs> so I first thing I said to you is, Well, you are married. You ain't got no wife. Yeah, <laughs> that's the first thing I said to him. I do not date married men. I don't care. He looked like he had a wife and three kids at home. He should have been flirting. Should have been flirting with me. And I was finally looking at him too, but I was only gonna shoot in the eye and keep looking. You see how bad it is for men where just meeting somebody, you already got to kind of get your lifting, lifting legs and lifting sh shoulders ready to carry some of this past baggage <laughs> that these other cats have left behind. So her first question to me was like, "Well, what's your name?" I was like, well, how, long, how long have you been on your job? Questions that you know when you meet somebody on the job when you go there. Her first question was, "You ain't married, are you?" You ain't married, are you? <laughs> 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 he was, and I was glad. He's like, "I've been the rings, I ain't married." I was like, "I'm gonna be anything to put in your pocket." I had so. to be a fool. <laughs> Ten fingers. Full ten fingers. I look for a tan line as well, lady. Like. She could see there wasn't no ring, rings around, <laughs> ring rings around my fingers. So we started talking on the phone, and we ended up at that whole turkey dinner where I had my turkey give birth. But you know it, I was like, uh, my minutes is getting ready to go bed, and I ain't going to be able to keep talking to you. But after he seen them turkeys in his, he was like, look, I'm, I'm, I'll pay the phone bill. I will pay the phone bill. I said, ah, oh, he is raised right. Well, she so was I couldn't so, wait to get was home. So, she was See so uh, The stories that y'all get, <laughs> she's got millions of them. It's no end to the... If you was to meet her in a room full of people and hear some of the stories that you would swear that she was just making sure. Like the, I know y'all watched the Sweet Addictions where she was talking about the bald-headed dog. Yes. Now she told me that story before she did about Sweet Addictions. <laughs> He did not believe her. But I did not believe her. He thought I was exaggerating. <laughs> then when I seen the sweet addictions and Candy <laughs> flashed the picture of the bald, cold dog staring up at the camera, <laughs> that was so sad, looking like, please give me a sweater. Or <laughs> a sweater coat. You know what I'm saying? Can I get a hoodie or something? He was like, this girl, was like, what? Why? Because, the, the, honestly. Nowadays, you don't get that. You don't meet people that will give you that kind of honesty. Everybody, everybody is caught up in this trying to shape everybody else's perception of who you are instead of just being who you are. Yeah, they preach King Kyle. I mean, that's the <laughs> truth. It's, it's, he talked very clearly and well. He's very well spoken. Thanks. Thank you, and Mama Mona, for raising a good son. <laughs> A good son, because he's he's been he's been patient, and I really appreciate you being patient. What if and, uh, if honestly, if patches wasn't if it wasn't so much quality, no. 
to her. I call her the throwback classic because <laughs> you don't meet women like her. Not any, not anymore. So this is the this, that's my nickname for her. I'm King Calm. She's the throwback class. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah, I but, might be the throwback classic. I is, but you know what? That new Daryl, that new stuff, that new way of age, I'm just not with it. You know, and and I know uh, sometimes it seems like I'm a little hard and rough to deal with at times. But like I said, you know, at least I'm not sneaking up behind you and trying to kill you while you sleep, uh, hitting you with my car. At least I'm the kind of chick that come to you and let you know. Hey, you made me angry. I'm not with Only because. You know. Only because. I think she's getting older and she done lost a step. <laughs> <laughs> if, we was, if it was about 10 years back, I don't think we would have made it as far as we did. Because we would have ended up scrapping. Oh, we we, we would have ended up scrapping. Okay, you know, I ain't taking no arrows and you know, I'm, I'm beat. You know, what's it up? And I don't do that. I like somebody's gonna give me a challenge, and that's why I date a big like you, because I want to get a challenge. I give me a little thin nigga, I slightly be pushing him around. And, you know, so. Probably you know. just. Probably just. Because, <laughs> you know, my, my work is bad. Just okay. walk past him and just smack him on GP. Just to see if he's paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nigga, you got to be fast. You got to move faster than that. You got to pay attention. Watch your surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> but you can me, you know, so I like to date kind of thick, so I don't feel like I can run over him. And, you know, it's not something I want to do, but that's my first instinct. Like I told him, my daddy was in the service, so, you know, I'm so used to being drill talk that it's hard for me sometimes, you know, to be most gracious, most merciful one thing. And, 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 and I'll be honest Most with you. gracious. That's, I love it when you do that, but that's not, that's not the defining feature that, you know what I'm saying, nobody wants to deal with punk. Yeah. Just point blank. But said, I think a lot of men wants. take a lot of those women. You know, like we just, you know, little punks and whatnot. So well, what it is, I just have to let them know ahead of time. Just because you big King Kong and whatnot, and, and he is, and, and I love him dearly. But for you couples out there to have them kind of relationships sometimes where one person, you know, or the other is slightly, uh, you know, may have some aggression when they, uh, you know, project the way they feel, and I feel like that only person can take so much. So, you know, it's best to be forward and front. You know, forward. I want you to know. You know, baby, you made me angry, and I'm not with it. And it's war. Base is just, you know, I'm gonna wait till this nigga go sleep. Then I'm gonna stitch him in or all the way around with the blanket and beat him with Bob. So, no, you are gonna know that that's war. So, you know, I just love a man that can, you know, deal with me in all kinds of levels because I can't deal with a wuss. I can't have a wuss. I can't have a pantheist, man. I need a strong, king cow. The key is for dealing with a woman that's a little bit aggressive is you can never back down. <laughs> never let them see you sweat. Because once they, because it's gonna be a battle of wheels. It's like a, a stern contest, and the moment you blink, that's when you lost. So remember that. Take that tip. Run with it. Do with it what you will. But I'm, I'm telling you, that's the that's the key. Do not back down, and don't come with bullshit. If you know you have no argument. Don't fight the battle. It's not worth it. Because somebody that does have an argument and done listed all their points on a checklist and they going through them, they will destroy your argument. So unless you have a leg to stand on, it's not even worth it. That's like we was telling y'all a story about the van. Well, I'm not going to hold on, Candy, because you know we emailed and answered in 15 minutes, so I'm going to uh, pause you for a second, baby.